Calculus 2, Chapter 6, Section 1. Volumes by slicing and rotation about an axis. Okay, so what are these all about? Well, solids whose cross section are plane regions. In other words, if we take a cylinder, say, and we slice it right in the middle, we'll get, depending upon if we took another slice very close, but if we take one slice, we get a plane region, which is a circle. How do you find the volume of this cylinder. Well, if you remember, the volume, volume of a cylinder is the area of the base times the height, or pi r squared h. But it's really better to say in general. The area of that plane region, this is a circle, times the height. And for the plane region in this case, it is a circle, pi r squared. So that's the b. That works for our problems that we do, um, even if they're not nice circles. If we would take some sort of crazy shape here and do something like this, and we slice it down the middle here, we would get, now this may be a circle, maybe it's an ellipse, maybe it's got bumps in it, humps in it, but it's the same idea. When we slice this, then we get this nice plane region. And if we think about finding the volume of this, now we've got this sort of horizontal base times the height. So we find this area of the base and multiply by the height. How do you find the area of that base? Well, that's usually pretty easy. It's usually given to us by some sort of function. This is uh, sort of some function f of x. So we can find out that radius or that height at that point. And that slice then gives us this, like a circle in this case perhaps, times the height. Now this is going to allow us to add up all these little bitty slices. They're a little bit thick. So we get really the volume is the sum k going from 1 to n, if we slice it into n pieces, of the volume of each of those. In this case, it sort of looks like a, a squashed can, a cylinder. Now, if you look at this, then you can say, okay, okay. And this is the sum, k going from 1 to n, of that area of the base times the height. Now this area in most cases can be written as a function. So this can be the sum as k going from 1 to n of some area function called a of x. And this height is delta x. We're going to add up all these. This height here would be this itty bitty piece. That's the delta x or the height of that individual piece. And we add them all those up with this base. So you're taking really a bunch of these slices and you're adding them all up. So you get this sort of stack. It could be sideways, it could be the other way. Stacking all those up, this is your h, and this then you find the area of the base, whatever that function might be. So this one depends upon which piece you're talking about. This x depends upon which piece it's talking about. And if we take the limit as n goes to infinity, then we get the integral. Let's suppose we go, and this is a and this is b, so we have some limits of integration. That function, a of x, dx. The delta x becomes our dx. 
this definition, if you want to look it up, is on page 314. That's known as um, finding the area, the disk, or finding the volume using the disk method. So, let's write down some steps. First, sketch a typical cross section. Once you've got that drawn, then find the formula of the area. That A of X function. Next, find the limits of the integration. That's the A and the B. And finally, you integrate. The integral from a to b, a of x, dx. So if we take an example, suppose we have a function f of x is the square root of x. I guess that's our a of x. Well, it's not quite the a of x. This is the function f of x. If we spin this around the x-axis, then we get sort of a cone. It's not quite a cone. It's got a curve to it. And so you can't just use the volume of a cone equation. You've got to come up with your own. So you take and you a slice out of it. This slice has thickness, but it is just a circle because we're spinning it around this. The thickness is the delta x or the dx. Since it's a circle, this is that f of x. It'll find the radius for us because it'll be the height at that point x. So, this is a typical cross-section. The formula for the area is pi r squared. It's a circle. But r is the y, which is the square root of x squared, which is just pi x. Does that make sense? Now we find the limits of integration. Let's say we want to find that volume up to, say, the number 2. So we're going to start, take this, this slice and slice it from 0 up to 2. So the limits of integration, a equals 0, b equals 2. Now write it from 0 to 2, pi x dx. the area of the base times this height, the dx. So we find, uh, let's see, when we do this, we say that this is then pi x squared over 2 evaluated at 0 and 2. And finally, we plug in the 2 so it's pi 4 over 2 minus pi 0 over 2, plug in the 0, which is really just 2 pi. That is the volume of this. Does that make some sense? Let's say we can do another one. Um, so let's remind ourselves, this is a perhaps a more generic, the volume of a solid area from A to B 
of this area function a of x dx is really the height of that small slice if we can this is called um, the method of the disk method rather because we're cutting this and making a disk so usually the disks will have some sort of um, circle so it'll be pi r squared well you don't really know what the function is for r in our case in the last one it was the square root so we need a function that'll give us the radius pi r squared so this will be the radius it's called the disk method it only works if you can slice them into disks so how about another example we want to revolve about the x-axis this function y equals x minus x squared and also you want that bounded by y equals 0 which of course is the x-axis you need to know what plane you're revolving around the axes so let's draw a picture so our x minus x squared we have a 0 at 0 and a 0 at 1 this is a parabola that opens down so it's like this but the only spot we're really interested in is this part because we also have that y equals x so here is the plane that we are revolving around the x-axis and so it'll make this is not a circle it's a different from a circle and then it's not an ellipse but it'll revolve around this so that you'll see this if you would spin this around you would see this shape and all we have to do is first of all draw a piece that re represents our disk and in this case once again it's a thick circle here's the function or here's the radius that's that r of x stuff and then the dx once again is our little now, the reason I'm writing this is we could do this the other way and then we would do it with respect to y because we'd have a dy instead of a dx so um, what is the first one we draw this representative disk then second step we find out what r of x is equal to well r of x is the height of that curve at that x which is just this y value which is x minus x squared so it's the integral now we're going from 0 to 1 so those are our limits of integration for the y squared dx and again this is I'm writing this because if you've got two different variables here you got to rewrite one of them in terms of the other and really you have to do a lot more work if you want to change this into a dy so we're going to change the y into an x because we have that defined up here so it's the integral from 0 to 1 of y, which is x minus x squared, squared dx. Which is the integral from 0 to 1. Square this binomial. You square the first, x squared. Take the product of the two and negative x cubed and double it. Negative 2x cubed. And then you square the second one, which makes it a positive x to the fourth dx you take the antiderivative of each of these terms add 1 to the power x cubed divide by the new power minus add 1 to the power 2x to the fourth divide by the new power 4 plus add 1 to the power x to the fifth divide by the new power 5 evaluate it from 0 to 1 
plug in the one, this is one third, minus two fourths, or one half, plus one fifth. Plug in a zero, you just get zero. So I'm going to go minus zero. Just to remind myself that I did do upper lim limit minus lower limit. So let's see. We have a common denominator of 30. So this is 10 thirtieths and minus 15 thirtieths plus 6 thirtieths. 10 and 6 are 16 minus 15 is 1 thirtieth. That is the volume of this solid. Pretty cool. Now we want to learn solids of revolution. This is not revolution as in war or something. This is the washer method. What is a washer? It's going to be thick still, so we can think of this as a thick coin, sort of. But the washers have a center out. So this is going to be similar to the discs, which is the washer without a center. This is the, well, I guess maybe you can say a washer is a circle without a center. And a, anyway. So the washer method using this circle with a hole in it um, has the same four steps. First you draw the region So let's do one of these as we go. Suppose you have uh, y equals the square root of x and y equals x from x going from 0 to 1 and rotate about the x-axis. So what does this look like? So you've got the square root of x, it does something like this. And you've got y equals x, it does something like this. They cross, and x equals 1 at 1. So you've got this, if you extend this, Square root of x down here. Here's your representative circle. But it's not a um, a disk anymore because we've got to remove put this line in here also. We've got to remove this center. So it's like a donut. Now, this is the width. That's the dx. And we add up all those. The little radius. So that's one. Draw the region. The little radius, r of x, is going to that y equals x line. So it's the y value. So r of x equals x. And the big R of x is going to the curve of the square root. So this is the square root of x. Okay. Step three, we need the limits of integration. We're going to go from 0 to 1. x equals 1. So a is 0, b is 1. Four. Let's write the integral from 0 to 1. Pi, 
and we need the capital R squared, so the square root of x squared, minus the little r squared dx. So let's pull out that pi from 0 to 1. This is then um, x minus x squared dx, which is pi times, I'll add 1 to the exponent, x squared over the new exponent, and add 1 to the exponent, x cubed over 3, and evaluate from 0 to 1. So this is pi times, um, plug in a 1, 1 half minus 1 third, plug in a 0, minus 0. And so this, like before, should be the pi over 6, or 1 sixth pi. That makes sense. This is, uh, I guess, we'll see it in a minute. But it makes sense because we're going to do the same thing on the vertical. Um, but this little area right in here, when you swing it around and make sort of a um, funnel, I guess, is like that, that you can use there. Now, if we do something similar, I want to show you that we don't always have to do this with respect to x. Suppose you had y equals x squared and y equals x. And suppose you spun that around to the y-axis. So rotate with respect to the y-axis. Um, you'd also want this then for y going from 0 to 1. So you've got the y equals x squared. You've got also, oops, I missed it, this area again here. Now if you put in this other side, this gets swung around and you have once again this funnel shaped thing. Um, make your representative. This is the washer, but now it's horizontal. Here's your dy. And that's what I wanted to present here. If you have something that's horizontal, your little thickness is dy, like the delta y, the delta x. Your r is going to go to the y equals x line, but you want to do this in terms of y. So your little r is really going to be r of y. It's just going to be y. Your big r of y, now, you've got y equals x squared. You can't put an x squared in here. That's not going to fit. What do you do with this? You have to say, take the square root of both sides. The square root of y equals x. So this becomes the square root of y. Does that make sense? This is y equals x squared, but it's also x equals the square root of y. Um, so, we've got those. We go from 0 to 1. A is 0. B is 1. Then you have the integral from 0 to 1 of pi big R squared, square root of y squared, minus little r squared, that's just y squared, dy. So we can do it this way and get the same problem with x's and y's switched one's for this sort of horizontal washer, the other one had a vertical washer. You calculate it the same way. The square root of y squared is just y, and the integral is add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. This one is just y squared, so you add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. From 0 to 1, you get the same pi times one-half minus one-third, and when you plug in a zero, you just have zero. You get pi over six, which really you should 
it's the same volume of this cone shaped not cone um, funnel shaped solid okay let's take the region bounded by y equals 2x y equals 0 and x equals 1 about it doesn't have to be about always the axes let's go about this line x equals 2 so first we need a picture of this so if we take y equals 2x the slope being 2 you go up 2 and over 1 so y equals 2x um, x equals 1 is this vertical line here and y equals 0 is the x-axis so we're taking this triangle we're rotating it around the line x equals 2 and that means we have over here at 3 another triangle that we've rotated around this line so this is our drawing we need representative so we could go like this here's our thick piece it goes around here and here's the center of our washer. So there's our drawing, step one. Step two, we need to know little r. Now, because this is a dy, we're going to use this in terms of y. Notice this inner circle is always radius 1. So that's a constant radius 1. The outer circle though is a little tricky. We want this distance from 2 over to the y equals 2x. Now we can't just use the 2x or even since we're doing this with y, x equals 1 half y. Because it is not this distance that we're finding. The one half y would be this distance from the y axis to this line y equals 2x, but it's not. It's 2 minus that. So 2 minus the y over 2 is the large one. Does that make sense? Got to be careful. Here's the y over 2, and here's the 2. So radius is 2 minus y over 2. This goes, let's see, um, this gets as high as 2 here. So we're going to go from 0 to 2 for the y values. So a is 0, b is 2. And now we've got our integral. 0 to 2 pi the r of y which is 2 minus y over 2 squared minus little r of y which is 1 squared dy let's see if we can figure this out from 0 to 2 pi now you square the first 4 4. The product is just y, but negative y, double it, negative 2y. Square the second, which is a positive y squared over 4, and then you have minus 1 here. So, I guess this 1 and the f negative 1 and the 4 make a 3. Pull out the pi. Let's do the integral right away here. So this is going to be a 3. So this should be 3y. y to the first over 1. Minus, oops, minus 2y 
squared over 2, add 1 to the exponent, so do it, divide by the new exponent, and y cubed over 3 times 4, 12, evaluated from 0 to 2. So here's the pi. Plug in a 2, you get 6 minus, well these 2's cancel. So 2 squared is 4, plus um, 2 cubed is 8 twelfths. Plug in a 0, all these the answer y, so it's minus 0. So we get pi times, let's see, 6 minus 4 is 2. Um, 8 twelfths is really 4 goes twice and 3 times, 2 and 2 thirds. Um, 2 and 2 thirds is 8 thirds. So this is really 8 pi over 3. And that should do it. The key for this one, if you're not doing it on one of the axes, be careful. You might and probably have to do some subtraction to get this radius correct. A little tricky.